This is Northeast Michigan's best news source. You're waking up to WBKB Early Morning, your first look at news, weather, and sports. This is Early Morning. Fire officials in Alpena yesterday released new information on what is believed to have caused a fire on Crapo Street in Alpena this week. And last night was a night to remember as one lucky Austinic resident won a trip to the ACMs in Las Vegas after the big karaoke contest at Sneakers. Plus, local businesses are teaming up with ACC for a new jobs training program. Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Ashley Reed. For a first look at the weather, let's check in with meteorologist Adam Claibon. Good morning to you, Ashley. We are at Friday, and this will actually be the first full day of spring. And we are at 28 degrees, so a little chilly out there. Northwest winds are at 6 miles per hour. But throughout the afternoon, this wind will start to change more from a southeasterly direction, and that will help temperatures just to be a tad warmer than what they were yesterday. And as we take a look at our satellite and radar, you can see not many clouds around the area. For the time being, there is another disturbance making its way through northern North Dakota and northern Minnesota. You can already see the snow showers out there, and that will be making its way towards us by late evening, right around the dusk hours and heading into tonight. And we could be looking at an inch or maybe two inches of snow as it does push throughout the viewing area. But as we take a look at what will be happening for temperatures today, we'll be in the upper 30s. That is right around average for this time of the year. But by tonight, temperatures, they will fall off to the lower 20s for overnight lows. We'll start to see that the snow will make its way in here, and that will even linger on into Saturday. Thank you, Adam. And information on what caused the fire at 224 Crapo Street in Alpena Monday afternoon was released by fire officials yesterday afternoon. A team of investigators from the Alpena City Fire Department confirmed after a preliminary investigation that the fire started in the basement of the home due to a pet mat, which is a type of heating pad used to keep animal habitats warm. The mat generated sufficient heat over a period of time, which eventually caused the bottom of the plastic cage to catch fire. The fire caused what the fire marshal says is considered heavy damage. By our standards, yeah, it was moderate to heavy. I'd put it in the heavy. Um, there, there was a lot of fire damage uh, in the basement and because of that. Uh, outwardly, the structure may look sound, but the floor joists were really compromised in the area of the fire. The residents of the home had many pets in the home at the time. They lost many of them in the fire, but they did save three of their dogs. They own a pet store here in Alpena. Robin says that everyone that uses these mats should use extreme caution when placing them on combustible surfaces and always follow their manufacturing guidelines. And Alpena County officials are waiting for a $240,000 grant to be approved from the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. Alpena County is usually only eligible for a $200,000 grant every other year, but with MISHDA's new plans for target designated areas, they recently opened up this new opportunity for the county to apply up until April 4th. Back in August, the county received a $200,000 grant that has already been used for homes in the area, and county officials believe this new grant, if approved, will be just as beneficial. So they designated the city, and they have a plan, and they that's where now that money has to be spent. So they want to revitalize like the downtown areas and where people in the community come. And that's their focus right now is that place-based targeting area. Skiba says county officials have a good track record with serving repairs for low-income single-family homes, and this grant would help to renovate up to eight homes in Alpena. The county will be notified by June whether or not they were approved for the grants. Well, last night it was quite the event at Sneakers in Alpena, as our friends at WATZ helped us in giving away an amazing trip to the American Country Music Awards. Twelve contestants that called into WATZ came out to sing their country music song of choice, for a rambunctious but excellent audience, Mary Thurston and our own Lindsay Adeluca were honored to be the MCs yesterday evening. Both seemed to have a blast. Three final contestants made it to the second round to sing for the big trip to Las Vegas. Two tickets to the ACMs with $600 vouchers from us here at WBKB for flights. And then finally the after parties. And last night's talented winner was... Donna yeah! It's not quite sunk in yet, but oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I have had so many people say, I'll go with you if he doesn't want to go. And I said, 
I don't think that's a problem, really. <laughs> The he Rusin she is referring to is her husband Gary, who she will be taking along with her to Vegas. Rusin is an avid karaoke singer every weekend, as well as a theater goer. For her songs tonight, she sang Hell on Heels by the Pistol Annies, My Heart is Lost to You for her second round choice by Brooks and Dunn, and for an encore Crazy by Patsy Cline. Another congrats to you, Donna, and all of last night's contestants. You all sang your hearts out. Roger City is working to make its harbor a safer place for boaters to dock. After experiencing dangerously low water levels in its small boat harbor over the past several years, Roger City is looking for help to make its fueling station safer. In order to afford a new floating fueling dock, the City Council has agreed to accept grants from the Waterways Commission and the USDA. City officials hope this move will increase boating traffic in the harbor. It will definitely not discourage them any longer from fueling here. Because it is, a, it was a hazard. I don't know if you've ever seen a small boat harbor, but the dock was probably six feet above the water, uh, and it simply made it difficult to fuel. The grants will help cover $51,000 of what it costs to build the new fueling station. City officials also hope that increasing water levels this summer will bring in more boaters. And Alpena Community College approved preliminary talks last night for a program that will benefit local companies and potential employees. Designed as an economic development tool, the Michigan New Jobs Training Program encourages community colleges to work with local business to help train potential employees. Seeing an opportunity, the ACC Board of Trustees agreed to enter into talks with three local manufacturing companies to see how they can get involved with the program. We've got a lot of expertise and people fired up and ready to go to do this kind of training. We've got the capacity and uh, when we can uh, uh, train, engage in training and education and this type of uh, promotion of skill advancement, you know, we've fulfilled our mission better. Former Governor Jennifer Granholm implemented this program back in 2008, hoping that new jobs would be created and increase the money brought in from state income tax. Funds from the program will help cover up to $500,000 worth of training. When WBKB Early Morning returns, it's time for another Fitness Friday. I met up with Trina Gray from Bay Athletic Club. We'll let you know the benefits of Pilates and show you some exercises you can do at home. Stay tuned. another Fitness Friday. I'm here at Bay Athletic Club with owner Trina Gray and we're here to talk about Pilates. I know some of you may have heard of yoga. I think it's a word more tossed around than Pilates, but tell me a little bit more about Pilates. So for people out there who have not heard of the amazing workout called Pilates, it's named after a gentleman by the name of Joseph Pilates and he created this style of workout in the early 1900s and the idea of it actually was to help rehab people from injury. So the thought behind Pilates is it focuses on developing really strong core strength. And when we're talking about the core, we're talking about from your shoulders to your hips, your front and your back. So really your powerhouse, the area of your body that needs to be strong for everything to work well. He um, created a series of about 100 exercises that all are known today as the study of Pilates. They become very mainstream, people can do these exercises at home, they can do them in a health club setting, and they will find a very strong and toned uh, midsection and really long and lean limbs, which everybody loves. Okay, and you said it started out as more of a rehabilitation exercise, so who does this exercise benefit now? Oh, excellent question. So initially, Joseph was rehabbing himself from injury, and what I love to share about that is that it's for people of all abilities, all levels. It's a mat-based program, meaning that you're on the floor. There's no impact on your joints. So for the person who might have bad knees or bad hips, what a beautiful way to exercise without causing additional stress or strain. So it's for the person who can comfortably get up, on, um, up and down from the floor and for the person who wants to increase their core strength, um, increase their back strength so they are less likely to be injured and to really develop you know, some strong muscles. Okay, so take me through a few exercises. Well, excellent. So the first one is called the roll up and it's a okay. great place to start. It's a really basic exercise. So you're gonna swing your feet out in front of you and lay yourself back on the ground. Now these exercises actually, they look really simple but once you start doing them, you'll find that they're actually it. quite challenging. So here we're just laying in a comfortable um, position. Her back is firmly pressed down into the ground, not arching up at all. She's gonna extend her arms out to her side and inhale 
As she exhales, she's gonna literally roll her body up and reach her fingers toward her feet. Now on the way back down, we're really gonna control and roll back down. Pilates is based on the science of controlology or controlling uh -huh. movement. Makes it a lot harder. Right, if you just had to fall back like a nasty plunge, that wouldn't be challenging. Right. So let's take one more. Inhale, on the exhale, roll yourself up. And then on the release, roll back, controlling the movement, fighting gravity. You can feel that, right? I feel it. Excellent, all the way down. Very, very good. So for the viewer out there that, that might be a little too advanced to start with, what you okay. can show is you can just gently hold behind your legs okay. and show them show the same movement. So rolling up. Help yep. yourself up a little Help bit. Help yourself up and guide yourself down. Okay. Well, while we're in this position, let's show you my favorite Pilates exercise. It's called the double leg stretch. You're going to pull your knees into your chest and curve your upper body off the floor. So you're going to look a little cocoon. From there, you're going to inhale, extend your arms up by your ears, your legs out long. Look how strong she is. On the exhale, swing your arms down and around and pull your knees in. Awesome. Let's show the viewers that I look that strong, but time. I don't feel strong because it's burning. <laughs> it's burning, right? That was one rep. You look amazing. Inhale, lengthen. You're really engaging your whole body here. Exhale, pull it around. Perfect. And set your head down. Relax. How are you feeling so far? I like it. It feels good. So it you burns, need but it feels good. Anything yeah. fancy to do this, right? Yeah. Just basic movements. Exactly. So rock yourself up. I'll okay. show you one more exercise. You're going to lay on your front. Okay. Lay down. Lay down on your front, yep. Extend your arms out in front of you and your legs are out long, they're lifted off the floor, right? And then you're gonna alternate your arm and leg and strong movements. Now this is a total body strength training movement with no weights, no bands, no excessive pressure on her joints, just her entire body working together to control this movement. Now so. is this something you wanna do slow or faster? Nice and slow and controlled is absolutely perfect. So four, three, Two, one, go ahead and sit up and Perfect. give me a high five for rocking your first <laughs> session Thank of you. Pilates. I wouldn't be able to do it without my great teacher, so. Perfect. How fun. Now, if you didn't know what Pilates is, you now know. So thanks for joining us for another edition of Fitness Friday. We'll see you next week. Yesterday was the first day of spring, and what better way to start a new season than a day full of basketball? March Madness kicked off yesterday with three Michigan teams fighting for a spot in the next round, starting with Western Michigan. The Broncos won their first conference title since 2004, giving them a ticket to the NCAA tournament for the first time in a decade, and they're taking on number three seed Syracuse. Orange take off early. Jeremy Grant down low for the jam. Western down 12-4. End of the first half, Syracuse's Baimu Cicada gives the Orange a 35-18 lead. Broncos respond right after, stepping into a three as Austin Ritchie. Western ends the half down 19. Six minutes left in the game, Connor Tavey bounce pass to Shane Whittington. The Broncos fall in the second round, losing 77-53 to the Orange. Heading west, Tom Izzo making his 16th consecutive NCAA appearance after Michigan State won its fourth Big Ten title in school history. 13 minutes in, Adrian Payne, he led with 41 points. Delaware down 10, Marvin King Davis in the lane. Spartans end the half up 44-33. Fighting Blue Hens pull within single digits in the second half. From three-point range, it's Davon Usher. MSU responding, though, with 11.30 left in the game. Brendan Dawson, you just saw him go in the paint. Then Travis Trice from outside the arc. That three is good. 93-78 State is the final. They play Harvard Saturday. And the NCAA action with Michigan and Wofford. The Wolverines hoping to make back-to-back -back final appearances. Up four, halfway through one, John Horford going in for a pair. Eight minutes later, Glenn Robinson the third makes it 30-16. Next play, Carl Cochran downs a lane, cutting Warford's lead. Michigan ends the half up 14. Nine minutes left in the game, Cochran from outside the arc this time, but the Wolverines hold on to their lead, winning 57-40. They play Texas on Saturday. 
Hitting the ice in St. Paul, Minnesota, the Big Ten Hockey Tournament started yesterday afternoon. First matchup of the day, Michigan and Penn State. The Wolverines and Nittany Lions split their season series. However, when it comes to postseason experience, Michigan has more. The Wolverines have played in 19 postseason games over the past three years and trying to get on top early. Scoreless at the end of period one, Derek DeBlois goes solo down the ice, but Matthew Scoff is there for the save. Wolverines keeping the pressure on the Nittany Lions in the second period, but with 20 52 seconds left until the break. Taylor Holstrom takes off Penn State up one zip. In the third period, Phil DiGiuseppe knocks it at one, but out of the faceoff in the second overtime, Zach Saar sends Penn State into the semifinals. Michigan State skates away with a 2-1 loss. And in the second game last night, Michigan State faced Ohio State. Spartans put the pressure on the Buckeyes early. Greg Wolf, top right corner. MSU up one five minutes in. Michael Ferentino looks to extend the Spartans' lead, but he gets robbed by Christian Frey. So it's still 1-0 Michigan State at the end of period two. Tanner Fritz with the rebound, tying the game at one. Going into overtime, chaos in front of the Michigan State net, which means the Buckeyes are able to take their first lead. Spartans fall 2-1 one, fall in overtime, just like the Wolverines. And overtime was the theme. Last night, we're going to head over to the NHL. Red Wings looking for a regulation win with the postseason inching closer right off the bat. Daniel Alfredson one time in this shot, making it 1 0 Detroit. In the second period, Wings go on the power play. Gustav Nyquist gets some help from the defense, putting Detroit up two zip four minutes into period two. Then Evgeny Malkin reigns on the parade 13 minutes later, scoring back to back goals, putting the Penguins up 3 2. But the defense was helping the Red Wings once again. Thomas Tatar getting that goal to tie it at three. Overtime, like I said, was the theme last night, but with .6 seconds on the clock, the Red Wings pull off the win, topping the Penguins 5-4 at home. Ending this morning with our play of the season, you, the viewer, have voted via email, Facebook, and Twitter. And today, we are pleased to announce the 2013-14 winter play of the season. It is right here in town. Caleb Smith from Alpena. Back on February 4th, the Wildcats looks to continue their current eight-game winning streak against TC West. Up 13 in the third period, Smith going solo down the court, backhanding this layup. Taking another look, Smith throws this one into the bucket before going to the line. The Cats would continue their winning streak, topping the Titans 72-55. And that's it for your sports this Friday morning. But thank you again for voting and casting your votes on your favorite play of the season. Ashley, back to you. Thanks, Shannon. For a look at what we can expect outside today, let's turn it back over to meteorologist Adam Claybaugh. And Adam? Okay, thanks Ashley again. We are going to start off with how temperatures are this morning and they are chilly and they are a little chillier than what we saw yesterday morning. 28 degrees in Alpena, 29 in Tawa City, 26 in Gaylor, but not too bad for the first official full day of spring. Temperatures were a lot colder as we went through the winter months and so it's good to finally get those numbers up just a little bit. 35 over to Minneapolis, 38 in Chicago. Temperatures for us will be right around those numbers for highs during the afternoon and we'll be seeing that the warm light conditions will only last for today because a much colder air mass is making its way in from the northwest and it's only all going to be because of this system coming through northern Minnesota right now. That will bring us our next chance of snow as we head later on into the night and we could be seeing decent accumulations maybe around an inch to two inches as it does move through but not going to be expecting more than that but the winds they will start to come more from a southeasterly direction right now only at the northwest at six miles per hour in Alpena seven miles per hour from the west in Oscoda and five miles per hour in Houghton Lake. Temperatures aren't too chilly. Winds not too breezy. So wind chills. We only see a few areas of pink here on the map going up here into the eastern UP at 13 degrees into the Sioux, 15 degrees in Mackinac City and more of the lower 20s in Alpena and in Oscoda. What's ahead for us today? All is quiet and cool for the morning. Average highs throughout the afternoon, which should typically be in the upper 30s and the lower 40s for this time of the year. And it will be snowy tonight as that next disturbance does start to push in. And we'll see that snow accumulations could be right around that one inch mark. But as we take a look at how things are setting up for us, we do have this area of low pressure making its way towards us. Actually, some rain as you go a little farther south, they'll be dealing with that as you go closer towards Flint and Saginaw. But for us, just expect it all to be snow by tonight, especially with the sun going to be down. That is what is going to help most of it to be snow. And we are looking at this system as it does continue to make its way onto the east. Really starts to spread in the clouds by the afternoon. 
Most of the snow comes through early tonight and the scattered snow showers. They will fade away by tomorrow. Maybe a few flurries with the lingering clouds after that for Saturday, but even for Sunday, things stay a little unsettled. That's why we will continue to see more clouds and a very slight opportunity for snow right around 20% chance on Sunday. 22 degrees, moderate snow. East winds will be at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Taking a look at our day planner, highs at the 30s for us, 22 degrees for a low tonight with the snow and our extended outlook will be back in the 20s for highs on Sunday and even for Monday with a low of zero. All right, thanks, Adam. Well, coming up next on WBKB Early Morning, military aircraft from several countries are continuing to search for debris in the Indian Ocean that may be linked to missing Flight 370. That story and more after the break. Good morning and welcome back. I'm Ashley Reed. In national news, five military aircraft from several countries are being used today to search for debris that could belong to the missing Malaysian Airlines jet. One plane already completed its mission for the day without finding any sign of the 777 that vanished March 8th. CBS's Tara Mergener has the story. Australia's P-3 Orion aircraft traveled four hours this morning to a remote part of the southern Indian Ocean. Crews are searching the area for two pieces of debris spotted on satellite images Sunday that may be connected to missing Flight 370. We've been throwing everything we've got uh, at that area to try to learn more about what this debris might be. The search zone is southwest of Perth, Australia, in an area called the Roaring Forties, 40 degrees south of the equator known for strong westerly winds. Because of the distance to and from the location, all military planes involved can only search for two hours per trip due to fuel limitations. It's about the most inaccessible spot uh, that you could imagine on the face of the earth. But if there is anything down there, uh, we will find it. We owe it to the families of those people to do no less. On Thursday, relatives of some of the 239 missing people on board arrived at a hotel near Kuala Lumpur's airport searching for answers. We try to address, uh, not to say problem, to answer their questions. Buoys are now in the ocean to chart the currents, but officials caution it could take weeks to find the debris. Tara Mergener for CBS News. Several ships will also take part in the search. A Norwegian vessel is already in the area, and China's government says it's sending three naval ships to join the search. Now we're going to take one last look at weather. Adam? Okay, thanks again, Ashley. Before you head out, 28 degrees. Northwest winds are at 6 miles per hour. You might want a light jacket, but the sun will be back out today like it was yesterday. But we are expecting more clouds to make their way into the area, and that is going to be because of our next disturbance making its way through northern Minnesota at the t for the time being, and it will make its way on towards us by late afternoon. But as you can see, mostly clear. We will stay that way for most of the morning hours and our early afternoon before our next chance of snow comes in by tonight. As we time this all out for you, seeing how temperatures are going to fare for us, 37 degrees for a high here in Alpena. Most of us should be in the upper 30s. Maybe even some of us could barely make that 40 degree mark before temperatures start to drop off tonight. We'll be in the lower 20s for overnight lows and we'll see that the snow does start to fly. Watch out for a good inch of snow, maybe even two inches if you're lucky before all of it starts to just turn into flurries by Saturday. Thanks again, Adam. Be sure to tune in tonight for WBKB 11 News at 6. For updates in news, sports, and weather, Lindsay Idaluka will have the latest in local news. Meteorologist Adam Claibon will have the weather, and Jeff Kolb will have updates from the world of sports. Also, don't forget you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports, weather, and news updates anytime, day or night. Or add us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash WBKBTV. That's all we have for you today on WBKB Early Morning. Thanks for watching. Good Morning America is up next.